I chain smoke and I say fuck a lot. But I accept myself for the way I am. I accept you too. Viewer discretion advised. Over 951 cubic feet of granite make up the 11 pieces of the monument. The overall height is 19 feet 3 inches from the surface of the ground to the top of the capstone. Thank you. Congratulations. There are slots and holes in the center stone that have astrological significance because they have been cut at precise angles to permit accurate readings of the sun and moon at various times of the year. C60 in oil is a powerful antioxidant that moves through the body like a magnet to attract and neutralize free radicals. Got to get rid of those radicals. C60 can slow down aging and reduce cell damage. It can also improve the immune system and reduce inflammation naturally. Not bad. If you're interested, check out my link in the description. Nutty. I've been concerned about the Georgia Guidestones for some time now, especially since I visited there myself in 2018. In my last video about Ted Turner, thank you to JC for leaving this comment. It's a link and it says, interesting. The link is to a documentary about the Georgia Guidestones called Dark Clouds Over Elberton. It was released in 2015, so it's not new, but it's definitely not well known. Although some of you may have heard of it, I had not. In the documentary, they find out and reveal the true identity of Mr. R.C. Christian. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link below, and I highly recommend it. But it is two hours long. So I understand if you don't have time to watch the whole thing. That being said, I'm going to be going over the relevant parts. And adding some things that I myself have found that hopefully complement these discoveries. Standing on the highest point of Elbert County, the Georgia Guidestones have raised a lot of questions. Four upright stones more than 16 feet high, with support stones totaling almost 238,000 pounds. And there's a message sandblasted in 12 languages and letters two inches tall. The sponsors of the mysterious project are said to be an anonymous group of out-of-state Americans promoting the concept of the conservation of mankind. Here's the mystery, though. Elbert and Granite businessman Joe Finley was contacted to build the project by a man using the fictitious name of R.C. Christian. Granite City Bank President Wyatt Martin served as intermediary, handled the escrow account for all funds, and says he'll carry the secret of who R.C. Christian is to his grave. Wayne Mullinex owned a construction company and had already been hired by Joe Findley to handle some of the work on the project. Joe called and said he wanted me to give him a price on putting a foundation in for a large stone. I went by Joe's office because we uh, have been close friends. We're in the Masons and the Shriners together. and Masons? We've been friends uh, for years and years. And uh, Did he tell you anything about, I, I would have guessed you'd probably wonder, what in the world is this? Who in the world wants this? Did he tell you anything about that? Well... A little bit, I guess you'd say. I mean, he said that the gentleman had come in uh, to talk to him and that uh, he had a, a fictitious name, which was R.C. Christian. In 1986, six years after the Guidestones were built, to explain them further, R.C. Christian published a book called Common Sense Renewed. The book was reportedly sent to every member of the U.S. Congress as well as to several thousand political officials and shapers of public opinion throughout the world. Over 200 years ago, a perceptive Englishman, Tom Paine, summarized his beliefs in a tract entitled Common Sense. He appealed to reason as the proper tool for resolving our problems peacefully. Today, the world is confronted by increasing portents of nuclear war. It is essential more than ever before that we explore every means for rational, non-violent resolution of worldly frictions. Once again, we must look to common sense to find new pathways to peace. While preaching peace and the concept of reason, his concerns quickly turned to the subject of population control. We live in a time of great peril. Humanity and the proud achievements of its infancy on Earth are in grave danger. Our knowledge has outstripped wisdom. We have controlled disease, but have not regulated our numbers. These problems 
are only symptoms. The basic cause is obvious to most educated people. It is the human overpopulation that is already upon us. Unless and until there is general recognition of the evils of overpopulation, we can make little progress toward building an age of reason. It is vitally important that each national government have a considered population policy. The need is urgent and should take precedence over other problems, even those relating to national defense. Supposedly, there's also a time capsule buried at the Georgia Guidestones, but the placement date and the opening date haven't been engraved. Is there anything underground that's not obvious above ground? You talking about like the time capsule? Well, that's one thing, Is there, if there is a time capsule. I'm gonna let that stay a secret. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, if there's a time capsule, usually there's a time to open it. Did it say on there there was a time to open it? No, <laughs> there sure wasn't. Okay. Oh, come on. Uh -uh. This is our one time to know to solve the mystery. <laughs> this is one thing and you are one person who would know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but like you say, my date's not on the bottom of that tombstone yet. I know, I know. Is there anything down in there? I don't know. Would anybody ever find out? Uh, yeah. Really? When that stone is removed, you'll find out. Well, could we put in a invitation to be there? Can we get a, a seat there for that? I don't know when that's going to ever be removed, to be honest with you. So if it were to be removed, someone would have to be the one to decide to open it. Can you give us any hints on who would be the person to do that? I don't know. While Mr. Mullinex was determined to keep silent about the time capsule, we discovered a clue at Coggins Industries. Within the paperwork given to us by Shirley McNeely, there was something that may provide insight into the original purpose of a time capsule. And at the same time, offer an explanation for the mysterious name R.C. Christian. What follows is from a strange document that we found among the records. The wording of it does not read like the other writings of Mr. Christian and seems to have been composed by someone else, perhaps another member of the anonymous group behind the Guidestones. The important parts of it read as follows. To whomever comes across this presenting, contained herein are keys that have been awaited to be placed here in proper sequencing and in proper order to announce a return and the activation of those events of prophecy that signal these events. Those who have guarded this great mystery and who have guarded the evolution of the human species itself are returning. It has begun. What the fuck are they talking about? This monument, known as the Georgia Guidestones, shall find threads unto the revelation of the mystery in the name R.C. Christian, otherwise known unto the contingency that is responsible for the erection of this monument as Christian Rosencrantz, 1378 through 1484. This presentation of keys, upon the finding of it, is to be delivered to the Alberton Star. The Alberton Star is to deliver it to the Atlanta Rosicrucian Society, the Rosicrucian contact number is one. That number is derived from the synchronistic mystery of 404-294-4172 in Atlanta. It is only those with the understanding of the rose and its return who will be capable of deciphering the codes and the keys that are contained herein. Unto this great mystery shall it in due time be unveiled, likened unto she whose great portal reads only, Quote, know thyself, unto the unveiling of her wisdom shall come indeed the bridegroom, bearing the knowledge of the perfect blending of the red, the white, to bring forth the gold, and thus the purity of the rose, it shall bloom again. This monument has now been activated by that which was to come forth. Its activation and technological understanding and many shall come forth to the portal to awaken and to be thusly activated. 
You are greatly loved, mankind. Once we saw through the glass darkly, we shall see face to face. Do not fear. We are with you through the... And that's all they got. But I don't know what any of this shit means. I wonder what the rest of it said. The document clearly associates the name R.C. Christian with the mythical figure of Christian Rosencrantz, who is alleged to have founded a secret society known as the Rosicrucians. The initials R.C. are often used by the members of the order in reference to their legendary founder, who most historians seem to believe was really the Count of St. Germain, a famous alchemist and philosopher. The Rosicrucians are sometimes called the most secret of the secret societies, and their members traditionally remain anonymous. We spoke with the Elberton Star newspaper, who told us they know nothing about the message and have never been given any mysterious keys. We also contacted the leaders of the Atlanta Rosicrucian Society, who declined to provide any official comment. Yet the Rosicrucian connection links the Guidestones back to Freemasonry. The 18th degree of Scottish Rite Masonry is known as the Knight Rose Qua, or Rose and Cross. Some believe the philosophies of these two groups are nearly identical. It is well known that Wyatt Martin is committed to taking the secret of R.C. Christian to his grave. But could there be any available clues to who he was without getting a direct answer from Mr. Martin? In 2009, a Wired magazine article reported that inside Mr. Martin's garage was the hard-sided case of an IBM computer stuffed with every document connected to the Guidestones. So they go convince Wyatt Martin to let him see the case. You might turn that case down. That is a letter right there from Mr. R.C. Christian. You're kidding. What's this? This right here. Just, just show him. Here's the... Uh... And so that is from Mr. R.C. Christian himself. That's correct. That's amazing. That's his writing. Yeah? And he called you W.C. So he called you W.C.? Was that his name? No, he, he always called me Wyatt. Why does this guy look familiar to me? Oh, I didn't recognize him. I'm used to seeing Jeff Dunham's hand up his ass. See, he says, I believe that the message of the Guide of Stones will not receive adequate attention until the problems of human overpopulation become more critical. In the meantime, there's little more that we too can do to spread their message. Hopefully, the monument will endure long enough to help direct attention to the core issues. And, and he sent me packages of things w to mail to other organizations. Yeah. That he was thought would help to spread the word about the guy's stuff. The more the more prominent ones that he mentioned yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Any of them you recollect? Of I don't remember them. Huh. I wonder if they were like UN or. Beyond that, I will not be asking you for any other task. You have already done a magnificent job. Hmm that you managed to do so while successfully managing a bank was a really impressive performance. I doubt that the complicated task could have been completed without you. With best wishes to you and Ms. Martin, I am sincerely Robert Christian. <laughs> that, see, that was yeah. in 1998. And he stuck with his, his uh, yeah. nomenclature, oh, Robert can you, Christian. Can you show us his handwriting without revealing anything? It's pretty. It's really, it's really pretty handwriting. It just says Robert Christian on it. I don't see why there'd be a problem. That's all it has is Robert Christian. But it doesn't say Ted Turner on no. it. No, and it's not your handwriting. No. So I can't be you. It's yeah. not mine. But he did call Hey, Chris, you see the W.C. Martin I was talking about here? Where? Down here, down here. See it? You can see it closer. I'll show you where it says W.C. Martin. I'm sorry, I'll pick that up. Oh, I see. See? Let me block oh. the town out there. I'm gonna put this back in. Sorry, I need to, need to drop that. Well, you're doing this movie. I may have to burn this right <laughs> shortly. Somebody <laughs> might be trying to break in and get it just yeah, to yeah. find out who. They still wouldn't know who R.C. Christian is. Right. Now, is there anything else in there of interest, uh, Mr. Martin? Yeah, historical interest. Smithsonian Magazine. 
to Mr. Robert Christian care of Mr. Merriman, <laughs> P.O. Box 268, Greensboro, Georgia. Huh. Oh, the Smithsonian wrote to Robert Christian. Yeah, Smithsonian Magazine. Hey, while you're looking at that, I gotta get a, it's the doors, I gotta get a drink of uh, drink real quick. Right That's bank statements and all that type of thing that I put in that little envelope. Yeah, I think that, let me just do a, a slow zoom on. Oh, that's the... That's the day we took that fly detector test. Where now? Right here. So they tricked them into looking, and now they have clues. 730 Raywood Drive, Fort Dodge, Iowa, 50501. And they have a name, Care of Mr. Merryman. We contacted the publisher of the book, Common Sense Renewed, at Stoyles Graphic Services in Lake Mills, Iowa. We were told that the book had been published by a Mr. Robert Merriman, pictured here on the far right. His obituary shows that he died in 1992, 12 years after the Guidestones were completed. After further investigation, we learned that 730 Raywood Drive was once owned by a well-respected physician named Dr. Herbert H. Kirsten. Dr. Kirsten was also an inventor who owned more than 10 patents registered with the U.S. government. This patent for a rotary valve engine shows the inventor, Herbert H. Kirsten, at 730 Raywood Drive in April of 1979, just two months before R.C. Christian first met with Wyatt Martin. Furthermore, a campaign donation in support of Doug Gross for governor in 2002 again lists Herbert H. Kirsten at the same address on Raywood Drive. This means that Dr. Kirsten continued at this address during the whole time that the Guidestones were designed and built. And he was at this address when the letters were sent to Wyatt Martin. One of Kirsten's patents included an invention for a form and facing device for concrete. I was once a concrete worker myself. We also learned that Dr. Kirsten died in 2005, which would fit with a timeline given by Joe Fenley Jr., who claimed Mr. Christian called his father in 2003, and also by Wyatt Martin, who revealed that the stranger had died after the year 2000. And can you say if it was after the year 2000? Yes, it was after the year 2000. In his letter to Wyatt Martin, Mr. Christian revealed that he was 78 years old in the year 1998. I'm old enough 78 to remember the days of the Dust Bowl. This would mean that R.C. Christian would have been born in the year 1920. Could this have been the same year that Dr. Kirsten was born? It was, and they go to his gravestone. But he left yet another clue on his gravestone. He wished to be remembered as both a physician and a conservationist. I have a copy of the Library of Congress catalog record, and it shows the copyright also uh, to Graphic Publishing Company, which was Robert Merriman's company. And uh, separate documents we have show that Graphic Publishing, of which Merriman was at least a co-owner, was an arm of Stoyles Publishing. So we can track a direct connection there, and we have other letters that actually connect Mr. Merriman's name in writing to the R.C. Christian that built the Georgia Guidestones. Professor Natty shared with us some additional records in the Fort Dodge Library. One of them contained a brief biography of Dr. Kirsten that clearly showed his beliefs were identical to those of R.C. Christian. From 1990, from Herbert Kirsten, it says, the number one world health problem is the population explosion, Kirsten believes. 
Controlling population is the most important problem confronting humanity, he said. Our present world population of 5 billion is expected to double in 20 years. We are already polluting the world and using up much of our resources. We should talk about controlling human population rather than controlling acid rain. The solution involves education and birth control in all countries, he said. Pharmaceutical firms are no longer coming out with <coughs> new birth control drugs. They're afraid of lawsuits. But was he, was he then well known for his views about population control? I think fairly well. Um, he, uh, Shockley is the name that I couldn't uh, think of before, Nobel Prize winner. Shockley is a reference to Dr. William Shockley, the Nobel Prize winning physicist who invented the transistor. In the 1970s, Dr. Shockley was known for his belief that blacks were genetically inferior to whites and that those with an IQ of less than 100 should be paid to undergo sterilization. Despite his scientific achievements, Shockley's racial views made him highly unpopular. And Dr. Kirsten uh, knew Shockley and said that uh, he, Kirsten, and he used to circulate this in the country club, which is how I heard about it, he had decided he would create uh, some kind of uh, measurement uh, that would prove once and for all that only white people uh, were, especially Northern Europeans, uh, were the superior race. And this was well known uh, around Fort Dodge. Dr. Kirsten had even written a letter to a Florida newspaper expressing his views in favor of David Duke, a well-known controversial figure and former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. A, a letter that I downloaded from the Sun Sentinel newspaper in Florida. This columnist is responding to a letter he received on an article he had written. Uh, it says, an Iowa physician, Herbert H. Kirsten of Fort Dodge, reacted to my attack on those who attribute base sentiments to anyone who wants to solve America's problems first. He lulled me into dropping my guard. He said correctly, uh, he said, I correctly suggested it is not wrong to be patriotic. Then wham, he threw in the incendiary names of Patrick Buchanan and David Duke, contending that they are among the few public figures who speak for American interest in this new era of internationalism. Duke, he said as my skin crawled, voices many beliefs held by reasonable Americans. It is unfortunate that more acceptable public figures are not pushing similar views. So um, Now David Duke, the one we're talking about, is the gentleman who was the Grand Wizard of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. In his autobiography, David Duke referred to William Shockley as his friend. At one point, Mr. Doan even wondered if Dr. Shockley had been a member of the small group of Americans behind the Guidestones. Did Shockley have anything to do with this directly? Apparently, Dr. Shockley was also a friend of Dr. Kirsten. And I knew that Dr. Kirsten and Shockley were friends. And how did you know that? Because Kirsten told us. In, he was in, very proud of well, the Nobel Prize winner. In your in your presence, or yes. Actually. So, who was Dr. Shockley, and was he connected? This is a 2006 interview for Scientific America by the author of Dr. Shockley's biography, Broken Genius. Who was William Shockley? Well, uh, first of all, he was the co-inventor of the transistor, which sort of revolutionized the world. Um, Second of all, he was the founder of um, Silicon Valley. His company was the first Silicon Valley company. And third, he was um, involved in a dispute over nature and nurture and intelligence and genetics and race and eugenics and uh, destroyed his life thereby. Yeah, he, he wasn't doing physics anymore, right? Oh, no, he stopped doing physics a long time ago. He had, uh, when his Silicon Valley company failed in the early 60s, um, he stopped doing physics. What, what was the name of that company? Silicon, uh, excuse me, uh, 
uh, Shockley Semiconductor. It was the first Silicon Valley company. Uh, Shockley was such an unpleasant person that his eight best employees left, founded something called Fairchild Semiconductor, and then several of them left and formed a little company called Intel. He could have been at least as rich as Bill Gates. He could have driven the technology and been one of the most influential and important people imaginable. Did you learn anything that really surprised you in the course of researching this book? Um, several things. Uh, one was his influence on Silicon Valley. I did not realize that he was. He was the reason why it's called Silicon Valley and not Germanium Valley, for one thing. He is also the reason why it's in Northern California instead of Pasadena, which is another thing. I mean, he had that much influence on it. Well, um, Silicon over Germanium, because that was the, the element that, that he realized was what you should be working with? Yes, he's, it was easier and more effective to be working on Silicon than Germanium. Uh, most of the original work has actually been done on Germanium. And it wasn't until he decided that he was going to build silicon transistors that everybody else switched as well. Here's another thing that stood out to me about Shockley. If we go back to Wyatt Martin from the documentary, and he's digging through this IBM case, you hear him say something about taking a lie detector test. And it seems like that was one of Dr. Shockley's things. Lie detector tests. Oh, that's the, that's the day we took that lie detector test. Where now? Right here. This is from one of his employees from the Silicon Valley days. It started to get dicey just after he got the Nobel Prize. We had a big celebration, and and shortly thereafter, he began to tr to travel around the world rather extensively. And he would come back with uh, new ideas and new projects, and we never really got to finish the ones that we started with. And this got to be somewhat frustrating. He felt that this became, you know, this was sabotage and somebody was out to get him. And he started a whole program of bringing in, the, you know, detectives with lie detectors. And that, that was really, oh, off the wall. We didn't, didn't take too kindly to that kind of thing at all. And then when he appeared on Firing Line. A few weeks ago, Dr. Shockley wrote me to suggest that when he appeared on this program, he should be wired into a polygraph machine which would, which would register any insincerity in his positions. I was quite taken by the idea, and like Dr. Shockley, thought it would be something of a television precedent to have instant lie detection applied to all of the guests at firing line. He even mentions reason as his faith. Basically, I have a faith that reason is a good thing. So we can assume a few people connected to it. Robert Merriman, Dr. Herbert Kirsten, as the R.C. Christian, Dr. William Shockley, and David Duke. I'm sure a lot more people are connected. The ones named, they were just the front line, and they tried to hide. Dr. Kirsten tried to start a 23,000 acre park in Iowa called Prairie Park and he wanted to have a bunch of animals in there including bison just like Ted Turner. Just because Ted Turner is an RC Christian doesn't mean he's not connected. He actually has a lot of the same beliefs we already know about the population control. But look at this. He would run around all over campus drunk out of his skull flailing around in his Kappa Sigma fraternity robes bellowing Nazi hymns outside the Jewish frat house. Layman remembers. Ted also put signs saying, quote, warning from the KKK on the doors of a few of the blacks then at Brown. Later on, Ted would go on to say, hey, I didn't mean anything by those racial cracks. You can't find any pictures of me with swastikas and a German army helmet. As for blacks, well, most of them are not black anyway. They're brown. Well, aren't they? It's very seldom you see a really black black. Ted Turner also donated a billion dollars to the UN, and the UN is who transcribed the Guidestones. The eight languages chosen for the four main slabs are Russian, Chinese, Arabic, Hebrew, Hindi, Swahili, Spanish, and English. He had to pick the major languages in the world to do that. Incredibly, the translations were mostly done through the United Nations. Do you believe that black people are inferior in intelligence because of their heredity? My research leads me, and it's a tragic conclusion really, 
Uh, my research leads me inescapably to the opinion that the major cause of the American Negro's intellectual and social deficits is hereditary and racially genetic in origin, and thus not remediable to a major degree by practical improvements in environment. So this statue actually was erected by white supremacists. You don't see him knocking this one down, though, do you? Fucking stoned. I got 